the latter rain, outpouring of the Holy Spirit fire, time is short and the divine fire will burn hotter than anyone can imagine, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, soon, everyone will know the truth of this statement, vision the 6th of January 09, in the vision, I was looking at the world from a suspended position, I could see people in areas from a, panoramic position and also at times, I saw things close up, the position varied as it did with the scenes and with, the messages that I was given to understand by the experiences given to me, I saw what looked to me like great fiery rain coming from heaven and it came in great drops or elongated streams it was not like the natural rain that we know of but it was like spiritually infused living molten lava a real fire but it was living spirit the living fiery essence of the father that was raining down towards the inhabitants below as i watched i saw that it fell simultaneously in one great event all over the earth but it did not fall everywhere and it did not upon everyone it rained down suddenly and i saw that many people did see it coming from above as it happened as it was a real physical event that men could actually experience and see, but it was also a divine event that not all men would experience, but I understood that men would know that God had entered into the corporate natural affairs of men divinely again. It was not a slow natural event like a storm or a weather phenomenon that you could track or follow and monitor. Actually, from my perspective it looked like a slow unfolding event, but I understood that it actually happened very fast. I was just being given an enhanced view for my understanding and learning. The raining fire of the father that I saw falling was the real living essence of the father himself that was being released upon those whom he had prepared to receive it below. It was interesting watch as it fell upon people whom you would not expect nor think that it would or even that it would not by our thinking or reasoning of qualifications the fiery rain would come down and fall upon a particular person who would be either aware of it falling or not be aware of it falling at that particular moment but when it did hit them they underwent a sudden tremendous change i watched close up as the living fire seemed to penetrate into them and infuse itself or radiate itself throughout their beings and bodies they literally became the very same essence of the father that the rain was that had fell upon them. Their eyes burned with a new life and even their skin was changed. It was not like ours. Now, it had a different texture or spiritual component to its makeup, and the fire flowed throughout their skin like a radiance, but it was not just an outward surface shining, but it was an internal radiance from within the skin layers itself. It was not like human skin as we know it. The qualities had been divinely altered, and the people now had new natures. I did not fully understand all of this process, but it was real and it was new. They were of a different spirit, as they now embodied the divine in such a way that we have yet to experience up to now. The people who were infused would now physically embody the divine fire, but it also lived through them, and it became them as they became it. Also, they did not lose their individual personalities through the process, but each person was still their own unique vessel, but they were also now divinely infused and were more divinely aware of God and understood their earthly purpose now. The fire seemed to fully express itself within them so that it flowed outwardly also by the transformation that was happening to them. By this I mean that there was such a holiness and a terrible presence of the Father in them and on them, that you knew that God the Father walked in them, and that he was now walking through them, in a manner that we have yet to experience in any generation yet. God was manifesting himself in a people just like he did with Jesus, when Jesus walked amongst us. But now these people did it openly. I then watched in the vision from a view further away, and I saw that it indeed only fell upon some and not on upon others. The selection of who it fell upon was the Father's and not of any man. Most of those that I saw that it fell upon were some people were very weary and very embattled people. From earthly standards, we probably wouldn't have thought that they would amount to anything by their current life and their struggles that they have endured. But I understood that their unique trials and their life's struggles that they lived out had actually served to prepare them for this new infusion that now came from the Father. One man that I saw in particular that received the fiery rain was very emotionally and spiritually broken. He had endured much physical hardship and I understood that he had endured much persecution from the church. He he had been misunderstood most of his life and he also had thought that he had failed God and that he had missed God and that he had lost his place. But God used these things in his life to lead him closer to himself and to purify this man to be able to be one that would become his chosen vessel. He was very beloved by the Lord and he had learned humility through the suffering which caused him to rise above the hardness and the hatred that's in the world. Even though he did not understand why his life was this way, not every person that I saw was as broken as this man was that had received this infusion. I was just 
just given, to notice certain ones for my own learning and for our beneficial clarity. Many of the people I saw seemed to be living successful lives and seemed to be spiritually healthy or spiritually active in their walks in spite of the hour in which they lived in. But the common factor that I noticed with them all was that they each had undergone recent trials and they were currently experiencing various levels of spiritual warfare and were in various stages of purging by the Lord in their walks. Most did not understand the full reason why their lives were embattled, nor understand the full plan of God behind it all, but they did seek God in the midst of it all. Another person I noticed was one that did not receive the divine infusion, but rather, this person watched as others were filled and was angry and yelled at God. One man I saw screamed out that he was one of the servants that had prophesied of its coming, and had taught on it, so he should be one that received it and that he deserved it. He was angry that the Father did not give it to him. I was afraid as I saw this in the vision, as I knew that his anger was pride and arrogance and that the Father was just in this, for this man's heart was not truly right. I also knew that this man would fall as he did not have the right heart necessary to stand in the next hour and to fulfill his course successfully. He had allowed the pride of position and the pride that comes from being used by God to bring forth revelation from God to others, to cause him to be disqualified and to harden his heart. I feared the Lord as I watched, for I knew that we all stand by grace and not one of us can receive anything from God unless we truly believe and unless we truly are fully surrendered to him in every way. I divinely understood that it was a matter of the individual's heart before God, and not just on his outward qualifications, knowledge, or training. God walks with each of his people, and he daily leads them on their life's journey, and what they learn throughout their experiences and through their dependence upon God through it determines their receptiveness or not. God desires that we utterly trust him, that we utterly love him, and that we utterly believe him, even though we each experience different levels of trials and events in our personal journeys. The lessons are the same for all men. We must each come to a death of our own ego and self-life and we must come to a deeper personal knowledge of God and into an intimate relationship with God. Our responses to God in our life's process will determine if we will walk fully with Him or not, and if we will allow Him to change us into what He wants us to be. God sees us all and knows each of our hearts. He knows who will let Him have His full and complete way in their lives. Even though we might think we have failed Him because of the severity of our individual paths and trials, and also because we did not understand the process of why we were in the events, the Father knows the depths of what lies deep within each of us. I watched as others were transformed here and there, and it was also a very shocking event on the earth as it was so sudden and unexpected. It also did not come in the manner in which we had been taught from the church leaders, but it came as it had been ordained from the Father. For this generation, there was worldwide upheaval, as the newly infused people began to quickly then be sent out by the Father all over the earth on the Father's business, and the people around them realized that they did not receive what the others had. There was a lot of crying out from people all around also, as this event also produced a huge surge of spiritual searching and even chaos in the church as the people who were not infused questioned the established church leaders of their knowledge of this event and its significance. I also was given to know that out of those who did not receive the infusion of the fiery essence, this did not mean that they were not the Lord's people. It just meant that they had missed the divine release because of their lack of inner spiritual preparation and that they had not fully developed their hearts before God. In their relationships in a timely manner for this event, they were still God's children, but they had missed the opportunity to be used in this higher divine manner for the next stages of events that would come upon the earth. There was a great sorrow expressed over this reality, as many of them realized that they did not fully lay hold of the higher call, or obtain to the mark that God had set for them all to achieve. What I did see was that this divine event caused a great sobering wave to spread across the church and also a wave of a great determination to seek God exploded across the church and also across the globe. Many began to rise up and decide to be purified themselves and they began to sacrifice everything to obey God, but it did not come as a reality in their lives until after these events happened. Nevertheless, this event served to bring about the corporate awakening and the rising up of the majority of the true body of Christ across the globe. Many now questioned what they had been spiritually taught by others, and many returned to studying the word and they began to search it out for themselves. A new respect for the church began to also spread amongst the Christian people, as they realized the reality of being the body of Christ, and repentance began to burst forth and a new sense of purpose caused them to not persecute one another, but to see each other as Christ. This event also brought about much chaos, fear, confusion.
dispute and anger amongst the unbelieving, Christians, and among the religious, and especially the general world populations. Great persecution also, immediately broke out against the divine fire, as many did not understand it and they feared it. The newly infused, people of God were not like them anymore, as they had been divinely changed, and this caused much panic and, turmoil, but it also caused revival to break out in a great fear of the reality of God to began to be spread, worldwide, the devil, was also greatly enraged as the divine essence now was embodied again in the earth, and he, no longer had dominion over God's people to prevent them anymore, and a great resistance and opposition and, war broke out in many areas as the divine light now clashed with the darkness, I saw great upheavals and war in, many areas, but also great restorations and great light begin to spread throughout God's people all across the, globe, the father is in full control of the earthly events, even those to come and he is active in all of the affairs, of men, the vision ended, submitted by unknown author acts chapter 2 verses 2 to 8 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place two and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting three and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them four and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance five and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven six now when this was no abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Seven and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Eight and how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Matthew chapter 3 verses 10 to 12 And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn, down, and cast into the fire. Eleven I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire, twelve whose fan is in his hand, and he will throughly purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he come, and rain righteousness upon you. Hosea chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us, he hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Point two after two days will he revive us, in the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Point three then shall we know, if we follow on to know thee, Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Jeremiah chapter 5 verses 23 to 24 But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart, they are revolted and gone. Point two for neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. James chapter 5 verse 7 Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman wiped for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Joel chapter 2 verses 23 to 27 Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Point two four and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Point two five and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palmerworm, my great army which I sent among you. Point two six and ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Twenty seven and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field Joel chapter 2 verse 32 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call Isaiah chapter 45 verse 8 drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together i the lord have created it isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing see micah 2 13 job chapter 29 verses 20 to 33 my glory was fresh in me and my bow was renewed in my hand 21 unto me men gave ear and waited and kept silence at my counsel point two two after my words they spake not again and my speech dropped upon them. 23 And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the 
the latter reign, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 15 in the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter reign, Psalm chapter 81 verses 8 to 10 here, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, nine there shall no strange god be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange god, ten I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it, see Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 43 to 48, Proverbs chapter 5 verses 16 to 17, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 8, Joel chapter 3 verse 17, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 3 Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Point two four. Behold, the darkness shall cover thee, earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Point three, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Isaiah chapter 62 verses 1 to 3 4 for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Point two, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Point three, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 2 Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. Psalm chapter 68 verse 9 Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thine inheritance, when it was weary, 